Please join me in a very, giving a very warm union welcome to our very special guest, our Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. <laughs> everybody. Good afternoon. Oh, it's good to be in the House of Labor, and it's good to see so many friends. Brian, it's good to be with you. Great to be with you, Vice President. So we got a lot to talk about, but let me just start by thanking everybody here. You all are the motivation for Joe Biden and me to do the work that we have done and will continue to do. We'll get into some of the accomplishments that we have done together. A lot of it, though, has been about investing in America and investing in the workers of America. Everything that we have done that has been transformative and historical in terms of our accomplishments, be it what we have done on the infrastructure bill and what we are doing to build back up and fortify America's infrastructure, to what we did with the Inflation Reduction Act, which is about an investment in new economies, Everything we accomplished when we were writing down the ideas and the plans is because we knew if we got it done out of D.C., we were going to toss it to you all to see it through. That was the plan, knowing if we could get that stuff done in D.C. through these bills and all of that, you all would be here to pick it up and make it real. You have the skill, the talent, the will, the passion, the ambition to see it through. It's an extraordinary partnership, and we could not have accomplished any of it without the brothers and sisters of labor building trades and across the labor movement. So I am so happy to be with everybody today, and I just wanted to start by again saying thank you on behalf of the president and me and our country. Thank you all. Let's hear from our vice president. Absolutely. Good morning, Madam Vice President. We are so excited to have you here in Boston with us, a proud Union City. Yes. Um, and before we start, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to the incredible team here at Local 537, to Danny O'Brien and Paul McGrath, and to really to your team, Vice President. The, they came in and they set this entire room up. Let's give a warm round of applause for our hosts and everybody who put into yeah. today. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. So this is an exciting day. We have the Vice President of the United States right here in the Union Hall in the city of Boston, Pipe Fitters Local 537. <laughs> so in this room, Vice President, as you know, this is our Greater Boston Labor Movement headed by our champion, Darlene Lombos. Let's hear it for Darlene and the Hi, Labor Darlene. Movement here in Boston. Hi. Good to see you. Hi. And what I wanted to open with is, is pretty simple. Vice President Harris, President Joe Biden, they have done their part. They have done their job to get people back to work, to give people a chance in America. Let's hear it for this administration and how much they do. One more round of applause for our great Vice President, please. Thank you, Kamala. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you. Thank you. So, Madam Vice President, you've had an amazing career supporting workers at every point across your career. When you were the uh, District Attorney of San Francisco, the Attorney General of California, an amazing United States Senator fighting the good fight, and then as Vice President, you have stood by unions, you have stood by workers in America your entire career. Can we ask you this morning, why has it been so important to you personally, and why so important for this administration to continue that work? So I'll start with this. I believe that all labor, all work has value, and that all working people deserve to, to be acknowledged for the value that they offer all of us. Um, I believe in the dignity of work. 
and the importance of workers receiving through wages and benefits the recognition of what they do. And so the work that I have done throughout my career has been side by side with labor, recognizing the importance of the labor movement, recognizing the fact that without unions, look, whether you've never been a union, been a part of a union or have been a member of a union, thank unions <laughs> for the five day work day week, thank them for the eight hour work day, thank them for sick leave, for any paid family leave, Absolutely. for vacation time. <laughs> Brought to you by unions <laughs> for all workers, whether or not you're a member of a union or not. Um, there's also this piece that is fundamentally a piece that really is about what's right and what is just. When you think about collective bargaining. So collective bargaining. Here's the bottom line about what that's about. In any negotiation, right, and SAG-AFTRA, um, congratulations, IATSE, congratulations on what you guys just accomplished. The culinary workers just struck a deal, right? We're That's seeing right. it across. Uh, and wages are going up as a result of all those negotiations, by the way. Um, collective bargaining. If we all agree that in any negotiation, the outcome should be fair, right? Everyone should start there. In any negotiation, the outcome should be fair. Well, when you're dealing with one worker against a company, against a corporation, do we think that outcome of that negotiation is going to be fair? No, no way. it won't be because of the disparity of power. So collective bargaining is about saying, let the workers have a voice as a collective all together, representing each one of them as a group, and then go into that negotiation because then you start to equal out the balance in terms of power in a way that the outcome will be fair. That's what collective bargaining is about. That's what worker organizing is about. It's about saying we should never require that one working man or woman to be having to, to argue for themselves, to fight for themselves without their brothers and sisters standing with them as a collective to just get what's fair. That's what this is about. So fundamentally for me, it's about the dignity of work. It's about what is fair in recognizing the value of workers. That's amazing. Let's hear from our Vice President with that response. Thank you, Vice President. <laughs> but this is an example of this administration, our Vice President, our President. This is what they represent, giving people a chance, making sure unions are invested in. Because when they invest in unions, they know they are investing in America. So this is simple for us in, in Boston. We know what the power union does. We have champions and allies in the White House, in D.C., the most powerful building mm -hmm. in the world, fighting for us. Mm -hmm. So you have an incredible group of folks out here that want to fight right alongside you. Mm -hmm. They have your back. We know you have ours. What advice would you give to this room? How can we continue this momentum? How can we keep fighting for the future that we all know is possible when we stick together? How, how can we do that, Madam Vice President? Well, I'll start by saying, in particular to the younger leaders here, um, just Let's start, start by just always knowing you're not alone. Know you're not alone. You know, sometimes you are going to walk in a room where you may be the only one like you who has had your life experience or looks like you. And it's really important when you're in those rooms to remember this room and hold that, to know that when you walk in that room, we're all in that room with you. Because the last thing you ever want anybody to be able to do is make you feel small or make you feel alone. So that's the first piece of advice. Always know you are not alone. And we stand with you. Um, I'd also say, you know, you know you're, many of you will have an experience and have already had an experience where somebody will say to you, uh, you can't do that or it can't be done or they're not ready for you, or it's not your time, or you're too young. Don't you ever listen to that. I like to say, I eat no for breakfast. <laughs> 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 I don't hear no. I don't hear no. And don't you either. Don't you ever hear when anybody says it can't be done. 
Just know what you are capable of and then surround yourself and make choices like you've already done to surround yourself with people who believe in you and are invested in you. And I love the point you made, Brian, about talent. Just, and you're already on the path. All the young leaders who are here today, you're already well on the path. You've figured all this stuff out. And then just also remember that um, our country will be as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And we love our country. We love our country. And our country was founded on certain principles that are about equality and fairness, freedom, liberty. And in the midst of an environment where there are some people who are engaged in a full-on attack against the hard-fought and hard-won freedoms and liberty that union leaders have always been at the forefront of fighting for. I also want to remind us all that each of us as individuals standing up for those principles will make a difference. This is not time to be a passive observer. There is so much on the line in our country right now. You know, I have now as vice president traveling the world, I've now met over 100 world leaders. Presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. When we walk in those rooms representing the United States of America, we walk in chin up, shoulders back, with the earned and self-appointed authority to talk about the importance of democracies, rule of law, human rights. But here's the thing about being a role model. Everybody here is a role model, so you know what I'm about to say. When you're a role model, people watch what you do to see if it matches what you say. People around the world are watching. And they're asking some of them. I was just in, in the UK, in London, where some of them pulled me aside. What's going on in your country? You guys going to be okay? Because it's going to have an effect on what's happening in our countries. This is a moment in time for us to really understand that this fight that has always been the fight that has been about the fight that labor has always been engaged in for fairness, for workers' rights, that's a big part of, for Joe Biden and me, a big part of our foreign policy as well as our domestic policy, fighting for workers' rights to make sure in these agreements that workers' protections are in place. Right now, Everything that we will do as individuals and collectively is going to have an impact not only on the people in our backyard, not only the people in our country, but potentially people around the world. And I'll end with this. You know, the, the nature of democracy, I think it's like there's two parts to it. On the one hand, when democracies are intact, they're incredibly strong. What they do to protect individual liberty and freedoms and rights. That's, there's a great strength in that. Also, very fragile. Mm -hmm. Our democracy is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And so fight we will. Fight Absolutely. we will. And when we fight, we, we win. win. <laughs> Do you want to say anything else? Let's close it up. Well, I, yeah, I'll just say... Um, I'm just uh, to the apprentices who are here in, pre in the pre-apprenticeship pre program as well. I'm so proud of you. You guys really are role models. We really do. Joe Biden and I, and I have to tell you, he sends his love to everybody here. Um, we spend a lot of time together, he and I. And when we are just having a moment, if we're sitting in the Oval Office or wherever, and we are thinking about what we are working for, we absolutely have you guys in mind. We have you in mind in such a proud way. You all are seeing through everything that we are fighting for and trying to do. I say that to the younger leaders of every age, <laughs> all the young leaders who are here. We really do have you in mind, and we're making a difference. And I know folks are working so hard. We're really making a difference. And the work you are doing as union leaders 
will have an impact on people you may never meet, people who may never know your name, but because of what you are doing, their lives are benefiting. So I thank you all, everybody here. Thank you. Wow. Hey, I think it's pretty plain to see we have someone who's strong and focused and investing in us. Are we going to fight for our vice president, our president? When we fight, when we fight, when we fight, Vice, Madam Vice President, we can't thank you enough. Thank you for being here with us today. You do an incredible job for us. And on behalf of everybody here, thank you for all you do in Washington, D.C. Let's hear it for our Vice President.